macros, mindset, and muscles. I'm Coach James. And I'm Coach Brittany. We're here to give you the truth about health and fitness. No gimmicks, no bullshit, just just facts. All right, we're back. I just want to bet because Brittany said that I wouldn't start off the episode. So here I am starting off the episode. Well, because you were like, you're going to start it, right? And then we got into that whole like argument about who started most of the And then episodes. she like wanted to pull up documentation of like how many times she started it. And then, well, you know, proofs in the screenshot. Proofs <laughs> in the screenshot. <laughs> Definitely. She keeps a record of everything. Yeah. Well, you never know when you might need that information, you know, sure. 10 years down the road. <laughs> I might need to refer back to that moment. <laughs> Thank you for not forgetting. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. So what is on the topic agenda today? Today, uh, measuring, measurements. Specifically, the four W's of measuring is what we're going to refer to it as. The whoop, 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 whoop. The, (laughs) (laughs) like, the what, the who, the when, and the why. Mm. W, 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 W. Yeah, four W's, right? Four W's. So we're going to hop right in, and we're going to talk about the what. What does it mean to measure your food? What is measuring your food? Measuring your food, getting a measurement of, yeah, of a, food. Yeah, a measurement of your food, right? Uh, the most accurate way to measure your food is with a food scale, weighing in grams. It's a, it's a game changer. Food scale is a game changer. Um, but there's other ways also to measure your food, depending on the person, will depend on, you know, how meticulous we get. Right. So in the circumstances, use, too, you may be out somewhere and you don't have a a food scale with you but like off the top of your head you know you can also do this and get a rough estimate on that measurement exactly so some type of measurement that we use like with our clients is uh hand portions um you know where instead of you know measuring four ounces of chicken you know you know roughly uh four ounces of chicken would be a palm-sized portion of protein so we will use like palms for protein, a thumb for fat servings, a cupped hand for carbs, or fists for veggies. And we're talking like green, you know, non-starchy veggies. So this is a way of measuring without any other tool other than the hands that God gave you. Correct. Nice. So, you know, um, like we said, grams is the most specific, like most accurate um, you can measure in ounces. You can measure using cup and half a cup and tablespoons. But those are really, like, not as accurate because when do you ever take a tablespoon and completely make sure it's totally even across the board? You yeah. know, most people do, like, keeping tablespoons or, you know. Because um, what you think is a tablespoon is not very is much. not, like, uh, for example, a... Uh, our one we always go to is peanut butter. Like people like one serving of peanut butter. And it's really it's like so four, tiny. It's really like four servings, what someone will measure out. Yeah, that one know? serving like goes on one cracker. Yeah. Like that you're not getting a sandwich out of that like serving. One serving of peanut butter is like barely enough to cover a rice cake. Yeah, it's barely. I mean yeah. you better spread it thin, add some water. Yep. <laughs> but uh no, they and of course like over time people have started measuring differently back in the day. Where scales weren't as uh, readily available, so like people would use cup sizes and things like that. Um, as you know, time's gone on. We got digital scales now. Now it's it's quick to switch over from pounds to ounces to grams, and with just a little push of a button. Um, but like you were saying earlier, grams is the most accurate. I mean, especially with uh, some of your other macros, like where you want to be very precise. So when you're measuring, like, really, you want to go by what's on the package, too. So when you're measuring meat, general, like, data, like, if you're using a food tracker, like my fitness pal, general information in there is going to be based on raw. So, like, if you're weighing chicken or beef or something along the lines of that, that information is generally based on raw data. But most people will weigh cooked. And as long as you're doing it, it consistently is what matters the most. Right. So if you start weighing your food 
cooked and you're weighing out four ounces cooked, that's really, you know, um, like what, six ish ounces. Well, four and a half ounces cooked would be about six ounces. Yeah. Six ounces raw. raw because you lose like about 25% of its weight in water. Yeah. So whichever one you decide to start with, stick with. Stay consistent with it. That's what's most important. Yeah. Like, like Brittany and I are different on this one. She she does hers raw weight. I do mine cooked weight. And I've just always did mine cooked. And it I've was always too done mine raw. And she's always did hers raw. Like, that's fine. It's cool. We just stick with what we've been doing and make adjustments whenever they need to be. Now, but, you'll get some things like uh, oatmeal where it'll say, you know, a uh, half a cup or... X amount of grams, you know, you want to go with the grams because a half a cup might not be that same amount of grams. Yeah. I it's mean, just like with bread too. This is actually, this is a perfect example. So when you look at a bread, um, like serving size for bread, it's like two slices for most. Um, but it'll say, you know, 32 grams or something like that. Well, guess what? If you actually weigh that bread, one slice may come close to that and two slices will be well over the grams. So you're actually eating more than a serving when you eat what the serving size is supposed to be two slices Yeah, because you're not weighing, you know, for the accuracy. Well, another thing uh, that just popped in my head is about like protein powder. So uh, what a lot of people don't realize is that, you know, they look at the, the front of it. They're like, Oh, it has 24 grams of protein per serving. All right, and it comes with a scoop inside of it. Well, it's also broken down into grams on the back. If you don't really look at that label on the back side, they may say a well-rounded scoop, meaning they're 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 counting on you when you do that scoop for it to be like piled up on top of it to get that measurement. So you may be getting under your protein goals because you're, you know, you're not doing it the way so. Uh, you can. Even, I've seen people even weigh out their protein powder uh, to make sure that it's accurate. But I mean, you don't. I'm not suggesting everybody do that. I yeah, mean, the meticulous, powder. like how meticulous you are, is really just going to depend on your goals. Like bodybuilding, you know what we do. We have to be a little bit more meticulous. But like when we're in the off season, it's not as meticulous. Yeah, I was just lifestyle clients don't have to be as meticulous. Um, there are certain things that you know you should be meticulous with. Because they're calorie dense, but it's not necessary for everyone. So. Into the next one. Who? Who should measure their food? Who should not measure their food? So I'm going to start with who should not measure your food. Okay. If you have a history with eating disorders Mm -hmm. or disordered eating or like obsessive Obsessive compulsive. Yep. Obsessive compulsive behavior. Um. Measuring is probably not the thing for you. Tracking is probably not the thing for you um, because it can trigger those former behaviors and that is not what we want at all. So if you have any of these issues, you should definitely work with a therapist to, you know, find out the underlying causes and see if you can't find better like coping mechanisms and stuff like that. But who should measure their food? Um, anybody with a goal yeah, that's not reaching their goal. So yeah. if you're saying like, I need to lose some body fat, I need to drop 20 pounds. I need to gain 20 pounds, whatever the case is. If you've been saying that this is your goal for a long time and you've made changes, but you're not measuring your food or you're not tracking it, then, and you don't have any of the things that we said you shouldn't have when tracking, you know, disordered eating, eating disorders, as a compulsive behavior, then you should track. Yeah. You should measure your food because it's going to give you an idea of what an actual serving looks like. And it's a, it's an eye opening experience. It is. It's very eye opening because you're going to be like, wow, this whole time I've been using like three times that amount thinking that that was a serving, but you know, no wonder why. Like I wasn't in a calorie deficit. I wasn't losing weight because I was eating way more than I thought I was or way more than I realized I was. I added an extra 800 calories to my salad. Didn't know it. Yeah. So that's why, you know, measuring is important. And 
if you have goals, specific goals, you have body fat to lose, you have muscle to gain, you need to gain weight, you should measure your food. So yeah. you know you're getting enough or you're eating properly for your goals. Yeah, because, I mean, it's very common. People either feel like they're under eating. Like, I don't eat very much. I don't know why I'm not losing weight. Or I eat a ton. I don't know why I'm not gaining size. And until you track it, until you measure what you're eating, like, you don't know. You're just best guess. You know, you're going by kind of like what your stomach feels. Yeah. Which, you know, it works for some people. Like, intuitive eating works for some. But some people need to track until you get a grasp on it and then you can switch to, to it right for like lifestyle eating. stuff yeah, yeah. But like you said who should track if you have a goal if you have a goal like you should measure your food you should measure your food and and this comes big because like we get a lot of clients that don't eat enough protein like mm. they eat enough protein to like bare minimum like survive barely but they're not eating enough to thrive and to give their body what it needs to recover from overtraining and, you know, under resting, like you're under, you're under feeding your body what it needs and you're not giving it the rest that it needs. So it's a recipe for disaster, it raises your cortisol levels and all that stuff. So, I mean, you're really working against yourself, even though you think you're doing more to help yourself, you're yeah. not. Yeah. Um, so anybody with a goal. Gotcha. All right, so we're going to move on to the third W. Why? Why should you measure your food, Brittany? For accuracy. Accuracy? <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> so, I mean, you should measure because you want to know what you're putting in your body. You right. want to know how much. You know, if you're, like I said, not tracking and you're trying to lose weight, but you're no matter what you do, it's not working. It's because you're not in a calorie deficit. Yeah. So... You are either eating too much and you're not realizing it because you're not measuring, you're not tracking, but um, you're not moving enough. Like it's a combination usually of those things, which, yeah. you know, movement will be another episode. Yeah, but. big one. Actually, that's going to be a good episode coming up. Yeah. And like, so why? I mean, there's a, a quote that I just really love and it's, if it can be measured, it can be managed. Like, like you said, if you don't measure then you don't know. You don't know. You're just blind. Like you just. Yeah. When a client starts with us, we require five days of food logs before Minimal. we will do anything nutrition wise. We can't help. Like we can't help you make changes to something we know nothing about. Yeah. We can't make suggestions if we don't know anything about it. If you don't know anything about it, then we definitely yeah. won't know anything about it. And we can't give you suggestions because we have no idea what your intake has been like. Yeah. So if you have a desire to work with a coach, that's a reason why right there, why you should measure your food, because it's something that you probably need to learn. You know, if you're in that category of people who should measure, I'm going to keep saying this yes. because I know the people who, Shouldn't measure will be listening to it like I need to do this. No, you don't. No. <laughs> so Okay. Yeah. Why? <laughs> I mean that's pretty much why right there. <laughs> All right. When should you measure? All the time. <laughs> <laughs> Always like tw- No, so you should measure, you know, until you get a grip on it. So for me, I've been measuring my food for a long time. I can eyeball almost everything I weigh. It's it's scary how accurate she is now. Like she can cut a piece of chicken and be like, I'm about to ask her, can I have six ounces of chicken? She'll cut it, sit it on the scale, and boop, six ounces. Like it's scary. Yeah. It's uh, a human scale. Just when you do it for so long, you it's just a habit. You learn, you know, you know what that portion size looks like you know what a serving of dressing looks like you know you know you know how many calories are in an egg how many grams of fat and protein yeah once, so once you, you're armed with the information like it, it you're changes everything and then the way you, you can see things enjoy things too you can you know go to a restaurant and if you are focused on hitting your protein then you know like if you go to a restaurant you're like okay i need roughly eight ounces of you know beef 
to yeah. hit my my protein goal for the day, then you can go out and have a steak dinner and still like feel good about that. Well, I'd feel real good about that you right know. now. Remember that steak? steak? Remember the, my birthday steak? Yes. She cooked me a seven point. A one point. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Boy, that right. One point seven one pound. Ribeye. Ribeye. It was beautiful. She, she cooked this thing for like a little over two hours. She slow cooked it. What was that fancy word you used? Sous vide. She sous vide it. And then she put that sucker on the grill. Seared it off. <laughs> I mean, that thing was. Y'all were so hungry. Oh, my gosh. The, the hunger is baked, real today. The baked potato and some uh... some veggies. I mean, I, I, I go back into my phone and look at those pictures daily. <laughs> I mean, it was the best steak I've ever had in my life. It was amazing. Oh, uh, what were we talking about? <laughs> steak. We were talking no, about steak. we were talking about going to a restaurant. Oh, you want to go get, a, get one somewhere else? Oh my- <laughs> <laughs> we're just so hungry right now. So we're like, right now, what are we, 12 days out? 13. 13. 13 days out from our competition. So it's coming down to the wire. We're... It's uh, the effects of, you know, we've been dieting and training really hard and for a long time. And we're right there, and it's um, just trying to bring it home, but it's definitely getting tough here at the end. Yeah. But back to the podcast. Oh, yeah. Maybe we'll do a prep recap, you know, after we, but for now, um, back to the win. Win. When, when you have you, goals. When, yeah, when you have goals, when you are trying to change your body. When you're trying to create Whatever healthy way. habits, like healthy eating habits, you know, work on, like I said, portion sizes and understanding what a true portion size looks like. Understanding, you know, what it looks like to hit your protein goals. Like each meal should have X amount of protein, which, you know, for us ladies, like I like to say, you know, at a minimum, you need one to one and a half palm size portions of protein, you know, at least three times a day. And then you need to have a little bit of protein with your snacks too. Like don't just eat like carby snacks, like have some protein with your carby snacks. So until snacks. you get a grip, stop. <laughs> until you get a grip. <laughs> I need you to get a grip I'm, I'm on get, your life. I'm get James. A grip on some of those snacks. No. That's what I'm about to get a grip on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we'll measure it too. So in my mouth. Hush. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. I'm sorry I didn't mean to interrupt you. It's okay. I mean, we've pretty much gone through the four W's already. So Yeah, so what does it mean to measure? It means to get a volume or amount count on your macros of your food. The food that you're eating. Who should do it? And who should not do it? Anybody that's had any kind of eating disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder. Um, disordered eating habits. Disordered eating habits. Um, binging and pr- all those things. Yep. Um, th- we don't recommend any of that. Uh, who should? Someone who's trying to live a healthier lifestyle and make changes um, in their lifestyle and maybe with their body. Why? Uh, why they should measure? Because if you don't measure it, you can't manage it. Um, you don't know what you're having. You don't know what the what adjustments you know for you to be heading in towards your goal. If you don't know what you're putting into your body, um, nutrition is the key. Like everybody thinks it's the gym. The gym is part of it, but nutrition, you can't outwork a bad diet. So if you don't manage your nu- nutrition, like you can work out all you want to and not hit, not get any closer to your goals. Yep. And nutrition, I mean, what you do, you know, 80% of the time is what's going to be successful. Like if you're eating on your macros or your goals you're hitting your protein whatever you're eating towards like you have calorie goals or protein goals whatever it is if you're hitting those you know 80 percent of the time and then you know you're living your life 20 percent of the time and i mean living your life not like going ham and binging yeah like that's not the same thing but you know going out and having a meal with your friends or your family and then coming right back to it and doing what you're supposed to do the 80 percent of the time right like it doesn't matter because 80% 80% of the time, you have it right. Yeah, and that, that little other percent is not going to wipe away all the good and all the progress you've made just from that. I mean, the meal, it's just 10, 20%. Yeah, also this doesn't apply to bodybuilders. At all. all clients. Yeah, 
<laughs> no <laughs> breaks for you, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> you better just get ready for mustard and nothing else. And when? When? Whenever? When you'd like to make a change. Yep. When you'd like to make a change until you get a grip on it. And then... When you're serious. Yeah. Like if, when you are serious about your goals. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, when you're serious because... If you're serious, you will go through the links. You'll go through, you'll do what's necessary for, to hit your goals. Or Even um, if it requires work. It yeah, requires I mean, extra work. It's not to, fun all the time, it's but not, it's accurate. I don't know it how. It works. I don't know how. Well, it's, yes, you may not know how, and your coach can help teach you. It's not that complicated, though. Once you get into the habit and get a little knowledge, like it, it's just like anything. You practice it, it gets easier. And it, um, very doable it, but it's one of those things that people get in their head and it, it's a, an excuse excuse not to do it because i don't really know how so i'm not even going to tempt it or i don't have a scale i don't have a scale i don't want to everybody sells scales i don't i don't want to is it i hear that like i don't want to weigh my food well you're complaining about like not hitting your goals like you say that you're eating this way, but I don't know because you're not measuring, you yeah. know, we don't know what you're actually consuming because you're not measuring. Yeah. You're just eyeballing it without any, you know, like experience of what a serving size actually looks like. And if you're, if your goal is fat loss and you're not dropping fat and you're not measuring, it's your diet. It, definitely your diet. Your diet and your lack of movement. Mm. Yeah, I can't wait for that episode. We're, I know. It's coming up soon. We're going. We'll definitely be. Uh, man, yeah, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. Good. Mm-hmm. But that is it for today's episode. Short and sweet. Straight to the point. Yep, straight to the point today. We don't have enough energy to babble on, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, if y'all have questions about this, don't forget. You know, um, I run the macros, the mindset, and muscle group. For women on Facebook. We don't have a men's group yet. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can ask questions in there. You can also message us on social media. Uh, Gatewood901 on Instagram or BrittanyD.Fitness on Instagram. Or even our business page at Phoenix.Transformations. Mm. So, um don't hesitate to ask questions. Yeah, please reach out. There's like, no stupid questions. We'll never make you feel stupid for asking a question. And we always t- stop and like it's, we take time to, we want to help some people. Yeah. Like, clients, not clients. Like it, it doesn't matter. Like we're passionate about this. We want to help other people be successful. And uh, if we can do that, then we're doing, doing life well. Exactly. So that's I'm James. it. <laughs> and until next time. I'm James. <laughs> Bye James. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to Macros, Mindset, and Muscles. Until next time. I'm James. I'm Brittany. We're We're out. out.